This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. We've been testing out the LG Gram 14 for about a week now, and it's quickly become one of our favorite Windows laptops of all time for four different reasons that I'm gonna be talking about in this review, but it also has two big issues. I'll talk about both the pros and the cons that you should know about if you're considering buying one and how it compares to a few Windows laptops along with Apple's N1 Max, and then I'll give you my conclusion on if you should buy one of these or if not, let's jump right into it. Let's start out with the biggest feature, the weight. Even after spending a week with a gram, I am still shocked by how lightweight it is each and every time that I pick it up, even literally right now. It is almost surreal. The weight is literally in grams, not kilograms like most laptops, being 30 to 40% lighter than a Dell XPS or a MacBook Pro or the Air, while having a bigger battery and a bigger display. There are some downsides though. The laptop is noticeably thicker than others, and not only because of the extra ports, which could be blamed, but also because of how thick the lid is, even though display isn't a touchscreen that needs to be thicker. With that, there is a ton of flex both in the lid and in the body, and I have never seen this much flex in any laptop, even plastic ones that cost a few hundred dollars. The body itself is made from magnesium alloy, so it's not plastic, but that doesn't stop it from feeling like plastic and a lot less premium than its biggest competitors that are made from super solid aluminum, and all of this brings me to a question. Does being noticeably lighter in weight actually matter if the laptop is thicker and it ends up going into a backpack or a bag anyway, where the weight difference isn't really that noticeable. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Now let's focus on other aspects starting with ports. The barrel plug from last year is gone and we now charge with USB Type-C in either one of the two Thunderbolt 4 ports that are on the left hand side. LG included a 65 watt brick but the Gram can accept up to 100 watts for faster charging and we also have a full size HDMI and a headphone jack. On the opposite side we have a micro SD card slot and two super speed standard size USB ports, which is becoming extremely rare for Ultrabooks, especially for ones that are this lightweight, along with a lock port. Now, before I mention more class leading aspects for the Gram, let me give a shout out to something else that is class leading, our sponsor, Squarespace. If you've been thinking about making your own website, now is the perfect time and Squarespace is seriously the best way to go. You can build a great looking website like we did with literally no web making experience. And it doesn't matter if you want a portfolio, a blog, e-commerce, or anything else, you just choose a template and customize blocks of text and images. It's incredibly simple, it's affordable, and ours have been running flawlessly for years now, bringing in lots of traffic thanks to its built-in SEO tools. Start your free two-week trial with no credit card required by going to squarespace.com slash maxtech or by using our custom link down below. And when you're ready to launch, you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Taking a look at the inside, I have to praise how clean the Gram looks with larger keys and trackpad this year, which are both very good. It is crazy how almost every laptop manufacturer has really stepped up their game the last few years. And I want to say that the keyboard is class leading because it's fantastic, but so is the Dells and Razors, and the same thing with the diving board trackpad. And like most new laptops, the power button also doubles as a fingerprint scanner for easy and quick logins, but unfortunately, we are missing the Windows Hello face unlock. My only other complaint with the inside here is the chassis flex when you're clicking the trackpad towards the top. Because of this, I just ended up using the tap method and it was very accurate and responsive. And although the finish feels a little bit plasticky, one benefit is it is very resistant to fingerprints. Moving up to the display, there is a whole lot of good and really only one issue. I have to say that I'm so glad that 16 by 10 is finally mainstream in these small laptops because the extra vertical space is really noticeable and useful. What's also noticeable is that the LG screen is a 14 inch, which doesn't sound like much bigger than a 13 or 13.4 inch screen, but I could definitely tell the difference every time I open it up. I also love how bright the display is coming in at 500 nits and LG also claims that it supports DCI-P3 wide colors with at least 95% accuracy, which is great. My only complaint with the display is how reflective it is. Now for most people, it won't be an issue since it will likely be better than their previous laptop thanks to the high brightness, but if you're trying to turn down the brightness to save battery life or you're using 
using it outside, or even in a room like this where I have lots of light, you definitely see the reflections. And because of the reflections, contrast is also noticeably worse than say a MacBook Pro. Now to me, this doesn't really make sense since LG is literally one of the biggest and best display manufacturers and Dell's XPS has an almost identical panel to this as far as technology and brightness and everything else, but it is actually even less reflective than the MacBook Pro. As for resolution, we only have one option, a 1200p base screen, which is noticeably less sharp than a 2.6K or a 4K that's in a Mac or an XPS, but it will work for most people and there are definitely benefits to battery life, which we'll talk about in just a bit. Above the display, we have a 720p webcam, which is standard spec, but that doesn't tell you the whole story. When we actually look at the video quality, it is quite dark and dull looking, and while the microphone is really loud, clarity is also lower than average. Here's how it compares to a MacBook. And now let's compare the webcam and microphone quality. This is the 720p webcam from the LG Gram. And this is the webcam and microphone quality with the new M1 MacBook. Book Air. And now let's get another downside out of the way and that is the speakers. They are louder than average like the microphones but they are also very flat. If you're going to listen to say a podcast or a simple video it will be fine it'll do the job but if you want to listen to music or watch movies they are a bit disappointing. Go ahead and take a listen for yourself. And now let's finally get into performance and I want to start out with the SSD, which is one of the fastest I've seen in an Ultrabook, even with a base 256 gig model. Um, it was actually hitting almost 3000 megabytes per second, where most 256 gig Windows laptops are about half of that speed and you have to step up to say a one terabyte to get a really fast SSD. With that, the SSD is not soldered, which is becoming the standard for these Ultrabooks and to make things even better, LG gave us a whole nother M.2 SSD slot that is completely unused, so you can add another SSD later without having to replace the original one. I have to say that this is a huge selling point for the LG Gram. The absolute biggest benefit of the LG Gram is that the performance does not drop at all when you unplug it. This is not the case with many of the Windows laptops out there, which lose drastic amounts of performance when unplugged, even Ultrabooks like the XPS 13. On top of that, the other thing I really like about it is that the fans don't get crazy loud, which is both a good and a bad thing. It's very nice if you're doing a lot of tasks that need quick and short bursts of power, like say for a couple minutes so you don't have to deal with huge spikes in fan noise like you can get with the XPS or the Razer. It is probably the quietest Windows Ultrabook that I have ever used. However, LG's focus on low fan noise unfortunately kills performance for longer term workflows and even some shorter tasks because they are choosing to limit free frequency and wattage to keep the system cool enough instead of ramping up the fans and this is software locked as well. Taking a look at the 11th gen i5 performance, it comes quite short of the XPS 13 with the same exact i5 CPU in Geekbench 5 because of the wattage limits that LG puts in, resulting in about a 15% difference in performance. Now in terms of single core, the performance is very close so you won't be able to tell a difference in regular tasks like opening apps and web browsing and you'll also benefit from a quieter system. Now, now when we push the limits of the CPU, the difference is substantial, about 23%, even though they use the same exact Tiger Lake chip. But what does this mean in the real world? Well, we exported 50 edited 42 megapixel raw images from Lightroom Classic and the LG took 4 minutes and 43 seconds compared to 3 minutes and 11 seconds with the XPS. Thankfully, as far as graphics, the performance is practically the same in Geekbench 5 and for gaming and GFX Bench, it was actually slightly higher. But when we combine the CPU and the GPU, say for video editing, it takes 30 minutes to export a 5 minute 4K project in Premiere, while the XPS 13 takes under 20 minutes. 
performance. Now, as you may have noticed, I haven't been talking about the new M1 MacBook's performance because most Windows laptop shoppers will want to stick with Windows machines, but that same 5 minute 4K task finished in less than 10 minutes, all while staying about as quiet as the LG. Now, LG does offer the Gram with an i7 processor if you need more performance, but that i7 only reaches the level of the i5 in the Dell XPS 13. So if you care about performance more than portability and quietness, then I would say skip the LG. Now, the other thing that I haven't talked about is battery life, and that's a major strong suit of the Gram for two reasons. The first is directly related to CPU power being limited, so the wattage stays down. And the second is for the really large battery, coming in at 72 watt hours, whereas the Dell has a 52 watt hour battery. Because of this, you get a great nine hours of real world battery life compared to seven with the Dell if you have the same resolution display, or about five hours if you have the 4K screen. So overall, if you're looking for a great all around Windows Ultrabook for regular use, the LG delivers. But if you need performance, check out our reviews of the XPS or the Razer Book. I'll go ahead and link both of those videos along with the links to my recommended machines down in the video description. The other option is buying an M1 MacBook Air, which is both cheaper and faster, and it doesn't have some of the downsides of the Gram. Go ahead and check out my full comparison right over there, and go ahead and click above to subscribe to see more videos like this one and to help us reach 600,000 subscribers. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.